I love the estate. I actually love it. I moved into the estate. I took that choice to move in the estate. You know, it wasn't a case of, you know, this is what we've got, that's where you're going. I wanted to move into the estate. I love the estate. I love the community part of things. It takes me back to my childhood of when I lived in a small community. I mean, I grew up in a mining village in the days where, you know, you could play out, you had no worries. You know, the most thing you got was scraped knees. You were happy go lucky, you know. It was just a carefree, easy going life. And nobody worried about jobs. You know, you walked out of school one day, the day you left school, and probably by the Monday you had a job somewhere. You had no massive unemployment. And for us growing up then, I think it was a very easy life. We never worried about where our food was coming from. My experience with food poverty never came into it till, you know, I came to the fact where I was working a lot. I was on my own with my daughter, having to make ends meet on very little. I went from having my own house, having family and what have you, and I ended up basically with nothing. You were maybe had £10 a week to spend on food. And you ne I, I was never in. I was always at work. So the times when I did come in, it was a case of you sit down, you have a quick bite to eat. It was pasta with a bit of margarine in. You know, literally, that was it. That's what you had. And it was filling. It wasn't healthy, but, you know, starved off hunger. You could still function on it. It was just a dark time. You didn't know where you were going to. You didn't know what life was going to throw at you next. It's just circumstances you find yourself in. And, you know, your depression kicks in, your anxiety kicks off. Your medication gets increased and you've just got to learn to live with it. We opened a church cafe to bring people in, you know, get people talking, um, nurturing people, helping out with people's problems and things like that if they had any. You know, we made food and most of the time the food came from stuff that would like normally you've gone into landfill, so you were doing food waste. And I got to know the community that way. And then as time went on, I'd get to know the Biker Trust, who is the housing association that owns our houses. So from that, I, we were asked if we wanted to go to this conference. I thought, right, where's the conference? Oh, it's in London. Hmm, quite fancy that trip down to London. You get to stay overnight. Might get to see some places. So we said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. And then that was our first foray into food power. And it was the End Hunger Conference in London. And it was massive. And you've got all these people and they just say things like, this. oh, would you like to you know, be on Channel 4 News and do an interview. Um, um, like, when? Oh, in about five minutes' time. And you're going, oh, no. I had stress balls and everything. I mean, I would never have dreamed five years ago I would be sitting here now making a little documentary about my foray into food poverty. I would never have dreamed that I would have written two songs and had two poems published and had two books that have got a poem that I've wrote in them. You know, I wouldn't have dreamed I'd have gone to America. But because they nurture, they help, 
you know, they see the possibilities in you. And people just, you know, they'll look at you and say, well, yes, you've got this story to tell. But if you tell this story, then what's it going to do? You know, I tell my story. I reduce the stigma of food poverty. More people think, well, you know, she told her story. I can tell my story. Or I don't feel so bad now about going asking for help. So everything I've done for the last three and a half years has all been because somebody, somewhere has said, you can do this. This is how you get empowered. This is how people support you and nurture you and want you to carry on. And because I've got a big gob now and I can do it and I've got the story, I can then shout about it and help other people think, well, if she's done that and she's come from nothing, then I can do that. I can go to university. I can go and write these papers. I can go and publish works. It's all about having that one person in the beginning to empower you, to make you want to do more and to help you along the line. Are you going to sit down? He says, no, I'm going to scrape myself off the microphone. Yeah. Are you quite finished? <laughs> now that's teasing. Come on. <laughs>